video today doesn't give me a lot of pleasure. For one thing, it's real controversial. The right people listened to it or watched it. I don't know. I'd probably take my damn channel down. I don't know. Uh, but it's not controversial to me. You know, it's controversial to to some of these other folks. You know, you you add whatever kind of adjective you'd like to use to describe the noun other folks, these other folks, but I'm not going to take the time to do that today. I'm actually going to do my best not to use any ad homonyms or, you know, no disparaging remarks. Just show you something here that I've been looking at and uh, you, you decide what you think about it yourself. Um, this is really twofold. This is about TDS or Trump derangement system or a uh, syndrome, excuse me, Trump derangement syndrome or... <clears throat> And also, I should say, it's early in the morning, but that's no excuse. My brain should be firing perfect like yours should when I first wake up. We could just had rest. Uh, but it's, it's starting out about Trump derangement sy syndrome, and then it's going to segue and flow smoothly into this pound me too epidemic uh, that hasn't really come to an end yet. So this Rose McGowan says right here, Fox News. I, I just typed in news this morning, as I often do. And this is one of the things that popped up. Rose McGowan and John Cusack bash killing of Iran's Soleimani and slam Trump. All right. <clears throat> they bash the killing of Soleimani. Okay. I mean, I don't want anybody to die, so I'm just going to read this to you. Rose McGowan and John Cusack took to Twitter late Thursday and early Friday with harsh reactions to President Trump's order of the airstrike that killed Iran's top general. Qasim Soleimani. Cusack, 53, I don't know why his age matters, should say Cusack, white male, 53. <laughs> Cusack, 53, spared no time blasting Trump on Thursday night, letting his 1.6 million followers know that he deemed the president clueless for putting United States citizens in danger because John Cusack, he knows he's brilliant. If you never saw the movie Hot Dog or Say Anything, go watch him. <clears throat> and this is from John Cusack. 8.54 p.m. on January 2nd, 2020. Quote, Trump in full fascist 101 mode, dash, comma, steal and lie, dash, until there's nothing left and start a war, dash. He's so idiotic, he doesn't know. He just attacked Iran. And that's not like anywhere else. No, Iran is a unique, specific nation, and he attacked that nation. What do you mean, John Cusack, that because Barack Obama gave him those billions and okayed them to start uh, trying to enrich uranium? Well, they said they weren't, but you know they were. That uh, they're, now they're going to have a nuclear bomb? Whatever, man. We, you know, Does anybody remember the Battle of Baghdad? I think it lasted four days, and um, Schwarzkopf really took his time. McGowan. 46, again, it should say McGowan, white female, 46. Known for regularly making lewd remarks against Trump on social media, sent out her own series of tweets early Friday attacking the United States and leaving some followers questioning her sanity. Rose McGowan says, Dear hashtag Iran, the U.S. has disrespected your country, your flag, your people. 52% of us humbly apologize. We want peace with your nation. We are being held hostage by a terrorist regime. We do not know how to escape. Please do not kill us. <laughs> what are you? Are you crazy? This is like Hanoi Jane to the end. I, I mean, this is really, it's really crazy. I mean, come on. Please do not kill us. Look, I, you know, I understand it could do these, you know, September 11th style, which I'm not thinking i'm not going to get into what i think about september 11th all right i'm well aware that the united states could pull off a false flag attack on our country's soil blame it on them as a pretext go to war uh a la the hegelian dialectic problem reaction solution <clears throat> or thesis antithesis synthesis that's that's what it really really means and uh, they even use those words to confuse you so here we go a couple people suffering from this horrible Trump derangement syndrome. Will they recover from it? I don't know. I kind of doubt it. Um, these are the kind of people that uh, they just, <clears throat> they're so self-absorbed. They've been wealthy 
and pampered for so long, it doesn't, from my perspective, appear that they have the desire or the ability to change for the positive, that they're stuck in this negative rut. So now you have, um, this is a little clip with Roseanne Arquette. I always thought she was beautiful when she was young, and I liked her in Pulp Fiction. Ain't gonna lie, I, I, this stuff is getting crazy, though. And I'm going to give you my opinion on it when I let her speak. But Rose McGowan is a part of this. For years, no one said anything about Harvey Weinstein. No one. I'm sure a lot of girls did what they need to do. Look, I'm, as I said, I will wait. I'll do the right thing. I'll wait and give my commentary after. Let's see what she has to say here. We are actually are having a trial, and, um, and, um, and you know, we've seen the justice system work in a way, recently especially. Uh, you know, people can get out of criminal behavior, um, and we're praying that that doesn't happen and that there's justice is served. This part I am not looking forward to in any way. I feel like it, it's like every day, it's like. Teenagers, <coughs> 10 and counting to, but for me, and I think for so many of us in this, there's been so many levels. And I think there are for so many women and victims that go through the system, like just going and getting a rape kit collected. That's like a horror movie. The whole thing's a horror movie. But we can't just go there on your word. An, an incredible amount of uh, people who still, well, they feel sorry for him. They feel sorry for the predators, that he lost his career. Poor Harvey. Nobody seems to feel sorry for the women that this happened to and were, you know, troublemakers or witches or trying to take down this power, these powerful men. That's not what's happening. If you had a dog out there in the world with his mind inside of it, you would shoot that dog. All right, I'm going to stop this right here because I want to make a couple comments that I believe are extremely important. You'll notice that between the two women, they mentioned two things. First, you had uh, Rosanna Arquette, or excuse me, I, I can't remember which one. One of them said, or maybe it was Rosanna that said both, but you had the points being made. Number one, everybody feels sorry for Harvey. Oh, his career's over. What about us? Okay, she's telling you that she wants you to feel sorry for her because her career is over. All right? Remember that, please. I'm not a like one of these people that claim to be a, a, a body language expert. I'm a people expert, you know, being involved in ministry for a time and, and you know, having employees uh, for a huge part of my life. If you kind of get used to <clears throat> reading between the lines, and if you're careful, you can become good at it. So what she wants you to know is she, you should feel bad for her because her career is over and not bad for him because they're trying to destroy his career. I mean, you just heard this crazy mad dog say that if Harvey was a, ma a, a dog, you'd have to shoot him. What about you, Miss McGowan, with your things you say about our president, the things you say about our country, um, showing deference and giving aid and succor to our enemy? <laughs> you mean, come on, lady. Wake up. And then the second thing, uh, where they, you know, she comes right off and says, you know, Harvey is being portrayed as a victim. And they're the victims. Look, let's, let's look at this again. I want you to see this again. I'm going to switch back. This one may be a little bit longer than usual, as in about 15 minutes. But I want you to just listen to this last little chunk here. I, I believe it's pretty important. I believe it starts right here with Rose McGowan saying this. Let's see. It's like every day. It's like T minus 10 and counting. To, but for me, and I think for so many of us in this, there's been so many levels. And I think there are for so many women and victims that go through the system. Like, just going and getting a rape kit collected, that's like a horror movie. The whole thing's a horror movie. That's another point I wanted to make. I mean, you see how she's slipping that in there. Look, I'm not even going to deny that having a rape kit done by professionals in a hospital would seem like a bad thing to me, even if I hadn't been raped. If I'd just been raped as a male, I mean, I'm coming to you as a male. 
of course. It's all I can, the only way I can come to you. I, I, it would be horrifying, but I would want it done because then it's no longer just my word because my word in court means just that, my word. The same as yours, Rose McGowan, or anyone else's. Um, that's just, so here we go, let's carry on. There are an, an incredible amount of uh, people who still, well, they feel sorry for him. We covered this. They feel sorry for, feel sorry for him. That he lost his career, poor Harvey. Nobody seems to feel sorry for the women that this happened to and were, you know, troublemakers or witches or trying to take down this power, these powerful men. That's not what's happening. There you go. So feel bad for us because of our career. And, hey, we, you know, they're trying to take us down. We're, we're not trying to take them down. Let's be realistic about this. If they were to be honest, they would say the point of this is to take Harvey down. In fact, you just heard Miss McGowan right before that say, or, you know, I think it's after it in the sequence of the film or of this clip. But that if Harvey was a dog, <laughs> we'd have to kill him. And we all know that that means we should kill Harvey Weinstein. That's that's what that sentiment is behind that. Look, I, I'm not going to carry this on forever and ever. I, I just want to say this. Look, the pendulum swings. You know, men should have been more careful in this country, especially in this modern age. And I mean modern starting in the 20s, work your way forward, especially 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. You know, this culture was created as glass ceiling, this idea that, oh, us ladies all work on the second floor, we have a beautiful view, and they don't know why until, uh, you know, a, a secretary goes down to deliver papers and then looks up and realizes there's a glass ceiling they can see up the girls' dresses. That's why they're up there. I mean, that's, it's really saying that the only thing men wanted from women around in the office place was their vaginas. To a small degree, I'm sure it was true, there were men that did that. But those men are now gone and the pendulum has swung the other way and it's cutting the people on the other side as it cut the women at the start and in the end you'd get no there's nothing that comes from this that is good the only thing that comes from this is the pendulum swinging and cutting whomever gets in its way is Harvey Weinstein a great guy I don't think he's, not only is he not a great guy, I'm sure he's a horrific scumbag. But does being a horrific scumbag, what does that mean? Does that mean that you, you know, at that point, do you have to <clears throat> go to jail? I mean, I just popped this little meme, stupid meme I made this morning up. And this is how I feel about it. It sums it all up. I mean, these women are now complaining and coming out and telling you why their careers are over. They can't blow Harvey anymore. Excuse the crudity, but that's what went down. And they can't hump Harvey anymore. They can't fillet Harvey anymore. There's no one else that wants them to hump and or fillet them in order to get a role. There was a time in their lives when these women had a choice in front of them. I was just listening to Catch and Kill yesterday as I worked in the woods. And this one woman saying, I don't know why, and think of it, a, a big fat man wanting to, to eat, eat a young girl, meaning cunnilingus, perform cunnilingus on a young girl. She said, imagine a fat man wanting to eat a young girl. It's, it's something horrifying out of a fairy tale. Imagine all the girls that the fairy tale fat man ate. Imagine him regurgitating them as old women and them now bludgeoning him to death with clubs. Is there anything better? I've heard the term the lesser of two evils so much in my life. How about the greater of two goods? There is no lesser of two evils. Evil is evil. Just say we're going to do evil for good's sake. Now that's just as crazy as saying the lesser of two evils. You cannot do good by way of evil. The ends never justify the means. So as you can tell, I'll drone on about this forever. I don't want to, and I don't believe I was droning on. I believe I was giving you solid information. I'm going to end that with this. Hegel was a genius. The Hegelian dialectic, the very way, the, the term dialectic, a lot of people wouldn't understand what that means. The, the way they word it. 
with thesis, antithesis, synthesis. Again, it's it's aimed at folks that would have. I'm, I don't want to say educated because that that assumes that the other people out there listening, you know, listening to me that wouldn't understand that are uneducated when they are differently educated. I would like to see Hegel go hew down a tree, cut it into boards, cure it, and build a house with his own hands out of his own trees. I doubt he could do it, but there are men on earth that can. And they wouldn't know what the hell synthesis, anti they wouldn't know what any of that meant. They wouldn't care who Hegel was, and dialectic probably would sound like something they'd eat. <laughs> Look, that's the wonderful thing about life. It's easy to decode their nomenclature. It's easy to know what they want to do to you because they tell you. And before I go on anymore, remember this. Be good to your friends. Be good to your family members. Be good to your loved ones. Be quick to say you're sorry. Be even quicker to accept an apology, especially when that thing your friend, your family member, your loved one has done seems to be so huge, you'll never be able to forget about it. Because constant viewers, at a time you think not, your friends, your family members, your loved ones, your very life will depart from you. 